Hey guys, so I'm going to show you a few ways you can make your designs a bit more adaptable to future changes. So when you design a part, you really want to consider where you want certain features to be. So for example, this key slot I want in the center of this part. So I really need to make sure that it's constrained to the center of the part and not dimensioned to this edge. Because if I, when I'm initially drawing this up, if I dimension it off of this edge, it might be centered now. But if I change it down the road and I make this part longer, it won't be in the center anymore. So you really want to get into the habit of constraining things exactly how you want them. So just take a line, for example. Okay. Let's take this point. So you really want to get familiar with these sketch constraints. So this is the midpoint. We want this point to be into the midpoint of that line. So no matter what I do with that line, it's going to stay in the center of that line. So that's basically what I did here. I put a point in the center of the top edge and the bottom edge, and I made a construction line. And when you want to make a line a construction line, you can just uh, you right click on it and you click construction. When it's construction, it changes to a dotted line. So another thing you want to consider is how long it's going to take you to make certain changes. So often I'll try to make as many things referenced to each other as I can. So this part here is referenced to this, and this part is referenced to this. So this is my master key slot. Um, so if you hover over the different dimensions, they each have their own marker. So you know this dimension is D23 example and if we go over here this dimension is d70 but I'm assigning it to d23 so it's gonna always update to whatever this value is so if you know down the road I want to change this to 0 0.6 they all change to 0 0.6 so it's a nice way of doing that so everything should be reference to each other so one change makes a change all throughout the program so stop the sketch so I try to do as many patterns or mirrors as I want so if this part were much longer you know I have it set up that no matter what if this part gets longer or shorter I'm going to have that in the center and these two key slots on the end symmetric from each other and these are going to be equally spaced apart. So if you notice here I have the quantity 20. If you want to use that quantity 20 in another uh, formula somewhere you can see that it's D41 but something that Fusion 360 really needs to add is the ability to um, use a formula here. So I can't put anything else in here other than a number, but I can use this number referenced in another section of the software. So that, you know, changing that would make it a lot better for this exact case. So right now you can see there's, there's 20 of these cutouts. No matter how long I make the part, it's going to have 20 and I'm going to have to go in and say, you know, I want 25. So I would like it if it were to update, you know, let's say I uh, made this a lot longer. It kept a kind of an even spacing, but it still was the whole length. And there's a few other ways I can kind of trick it to do that, but it would be nice to just put a formula in here. So if you see the distance I have for that pattern, it's referencing several other dimensions. So D5, if you look back in the beginning, the distance I made this entire part was D5. So I have the whole thing kind of referenced to each other. Another thing you really want to watch out for is when you extrude and you cut certain things and uh, you want to avoid doing this you know I know it's easy because 
you could just click extrude, click the thing, not even think about it, and just, you know, uh, do your cut like that. But you really want to watch out for that because let's say we go rewind the timeline, so you can just drag that over, rewind the timeline back to before you actually made that cut. So let's say we just put a flange here, and all right, let's just do this. And I'm going to fast forward to the end of the timeline again. And you'll see what we have is our key slots. And let's say you decided you wanted to change this. You're like, oh, you know what? I want it, I want it like this. Not that this would actually make sense in this case. But you'll see that because you did the uh, extrude like that, it's going to affect the the design you have. One way around that, um, first of all, you shouldn't actually do that, but let's say uh, what you really should do is instead of distance, you go to two object and you can do that. So no matter what, it's only going to be to the other side of that face. But another thing that Fusion 360 is missing right now is the ability to put thickness in for the distance. So I I like distance as long as I could use thickness. But I can't. Even though in the sheet metal rules, you go up here, so your thickness, and if you look over here, you're using thickness in these conditions, and you're allowed to use it in, in uh, that circumstance but I'd really like to use it all throughout the model because that's going to come in handy as well as bin radius I can't use bin radius anywhere other than in the sheet metal rules so those are little things that are going to come in handy but so like I said if we didn't have this designed the right way right so let's just say it was a distance and you did have it like that a way to avoid this happening is you can actually move the flange further in the timeline. You can say, okay, well, I want to move that after I made the cut. And then it won't be going through. So, uh, there's a few things I'd like Fusion 360 to add, which would be the ability to reference the thickness, the bin radius, and also driven dimensions. So the reason I would like driven dimensions to have a uh, designator is that in this case, I have the all these fillets, right? And it looks like I, you know, I missed a few. Oh, that, oh, I didn't miss a few. I, I changed the twenty-five to a twenty. So, but I had to select each one of these individually because no, normally I would go ahead and do these two and then pattern it, right? But the thing about that is I need to give it a distance and I need to know the exact distance to the center line of this to the center line of that. But, let's see if I actually have it. The, the number is uh, uh, much longer than that, the real number is uh, basically if it's not exact the pattern won't pick it up so if I were able to use this in another part of the program like in the pattern I could also pattern that in the distance here I could put that driven dimension in this distance formula for you know the other pattern that patterns for the cutout but uh, the same thing kind of applies another thing I'd like to see is a hem feature so right now there's um, you kind of have to cheat and this is also where the thickness is going to come in handy so if you want to do a hem you can click the edge you want and you're going to want to the height is actually going to be the thickness, whatever your thickness is, 
again, they need to add that in. So thickness times two, okay, plus two times your bend radius. So in this case, my bend radius is one thousandth of an inch. And so it needs to be a hair over that for the hem to work. So again, thickness times two plus your bend radius times two plus you can just say you know, one tenth or one thousandth of an inch. So go ahead and click OK. And when we do the flange again on the next corner, it'll actually work. But you know, a lot of other you know software programs will have a hem feature where you're just gonna go ahead and click it, click it, uh, click an edge, and then say that you want to do a hem. So yeah, I hope you guys found that video helpful. If you have any questions, leave a comment below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.